welcome and uh, thank you for this day we praise the lord for giving us another day to uh, look into his word we are going through the series uh, our higher calling and uh, this is a uh, presentation number two this is a uh, presentation uh, number two and uh, where you are tuned in where you are listening uh, i welcome you all and uh, the presentation we want to look at is uh, the prayer of faith the prayer of faith and so uh, I have said that this is a, an 18 part series in uh, our higher calling. We shall be looking at the essentials that uh, uh, in a Christian uh, lifestyle or in a, a Christian home and uh, the mark that the Lord has set us to reach. And we, we looked at uh, number one, we were we were looking at uh, we were looking at prayer that is what we were looking at uh, the, the other time that is what uh, we we were looking at other time that is uh, prayer and praise and today we are looking at uh, the prayer of faith the prayer of faith and so uh, i welcome you and uh, let us share in a few things uh, sometimes uh, we en entangle ourselves in looking after deep things and uh, forget about the basics that uh, we christian need more in our lives and so let us have a word of prayer as we start abba father in heaven we thank you for this day we thank you for thy love and guidance upon us lord we thank you for the spirit of truth. And Lord, as we continue looking at uh, these uh, themes on uh, our higher calling, we pray that uh, we may be converted to the whole truth. In Jesus' name, we pray of these things. Amen. Uh, the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. They say uh, something essential to learn about and uh, uh, there have been people who have uh, made prayers in their life there, there are many examples that we can give and uh, I want us to look at uh, the prayer of faith the, and there is no other better place to start this than uh, the book of uh, Mark chapter 11. The book of Mark chapter 11. Verses 24. Mark 11 verses 24. It will keep us started here. It says, therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have them. Uh, it's exercising the power of belief in uh, what the Lord has promised in his word. And uh, this is something that every Christian has to cultivate. The disciples were taught how to pray. And um, another time there is a person who was brought to the disciples a child to be healed and uh, they were not able to pray for this child and the child to be healed and christ said o ye of little faith o ye of little faith and he was asking them for how long does he have to be with them When you look at the book of Matthew chapter 8, let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, we read this. 
this is about the stone. And when he was entered into a ship, verse 23, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep, and his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and sea, and there was a great calm. But the man marveled, saying, What man of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey? And so, uh, we find that uh, Jesus always uh, depended on his Father, and he was in close connection with him, in so much that uh, whatever thing he prayed for, he knew he would get it. One time also in Matthew chapter 14, we find uh, uh, Peter starting to walk on water, but when he looked at the storms, he was afraid and uh, started to sing. And um, you find Jesus uh, stretched his hand and uh, caught him and uh, said unto him, O thou of little faith. And so uh, we, we find that uh, when... Uh, you come to the Lord. You must believe. You must have faith that what he has said, he will be able to do it. And uh, this is the vital condition in, uh, in our prayers. Because we are looking at the prayer of faith. What are some of the vital conditions in, in prayer? Uh, the conditions of asking, but the prayer that comes from an honest heart when the symbol wants of the soul are expressed just as we would ask an earthly friend for a favor, expecting that it will be granted. This is the prayer of faith. And so you don't have to doubt about anything. When you come to the Lord, you have to believe that um, whatever he has said in his word, he will be able to do it. You have just to trust that whatever the Lord has said, he will give unto you. He will be able to to give unto you. That is the prayer of faith. And uh, another example is given in the book of Matthew, chapter 16. When he is telling the disciples about um, feeding uh, the multitude, let us go to Matthew, chapter 16. You're looking at the Prayer of faith. Matthew chapter 16. When he is talking about with the disciples about uh, the living of the Pharisees and uh, their demand for the signs. And they start reasoning amongst themselves because they had not carried bread. And Jesus is telling them, ye of little faith. Why reason among yourself? Because you have brought no, no, no bread. And so, <coughs> sorry for that. Even though the disciples had been with Jesus for a long time, but um, they always depended on Christ being with them. They never cultivated their faith that uh, they had God amongst them. God dwelt among them. And uh, whatever thing they needed to ask, they just had to exercise faith, and uh, it will be done unto them. Talking about the book of Luke, chapter 12 also, about um, God clothing the, the, uh, the lilies of the field. And he is asking them, if God careth for these things that uh, are here today and tomorrow are gone, will he not be able... To do even more exceedingly abundantly to those who ask of him. And uh, so you find that um, when Christ is talking about faith, uh, every time he emphasizes on uh, believing on him. So faith without believing on the one that you are. When you are praying, if you don't believe in the one that you are praying to, it can be of no benefit unto you. It can be of no benefit uh, unto you. And uh, so the the very first condition of asking uh, is to have the 
uh, earnest heart that the symbol and believe that the symbol ones of the soul as expressed to God, he will answer them in his richness, in his glory. You don't have to pray while wavering. We are not called to remain, because you are looking at this topic of a higher calling, we are not just called to think and to limit ourselves in the situation we are in. God is calling us to where he is, to be able to even experience heaven while we are still here on earth. God is calling his children to experience heaven while they are still here on earth. And so, look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So, the prayer of faith is implicitly believing that uh, the Lord will do what he has said he will do. And then he will be able to do it. And uh, I'm looking at the book of uh, Matthew. The book of Matthew. Uh, Jesus always admonished. You know, looking at this theme, uh, in the beginning, God created the earth and the heavens. God created the earth and the heavens. And how, how did God create the heavens and the earth? He was just able to speak a word and uh, everything came to be. He, he, he just spoke a word and all that uh, was to happen, happened. Also, if we believe in the Lord, if we believe in the Lord, we, we have just to speak of the word and whatever thing that we need, it will come to pass. We just need to speak the word and uh, whatever things we need it will come to pass. And this is exercising, this is uh, exercising faith. When we believe and we speak, then these things will be uh, given unto us. And when we speak, we don't have to doubt because we are talking to our Father who is a friend of ours. We are talking to the father and his son, who are not our enemies, but are our close friend. And uh, the book of the division of Psalms 116 verse 10, sorry, Psalms 116. Verses 10. Psalms 116, verses 10. We are looking at the prayer of faith. Psalms 116, verse 10 says, I believe, therefore, I, I believe, therefore, have I spoken, I was greatly afflicted. So, uh, and when you go to Matthew 21, 21 and 22, Matthew 21, connecting with the, the book of Psalms. Matthew 21. Matthew chapter 21, verses 21 and 22. This is talking about the, 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 the fig tree in the book of Matthew. Let us read 21 from verse 18. Now in the morning as he returned in the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let not fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon the fig tree withered away. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this, 
which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing we shall receive. So the prayer of the faith of faith is speaking without doubt. If you speak without doubt, as Jesus Christ spoke and things happen, as God spoke and things happen, without doubt, if we approach God in our speech without doubt, then we are assured that the things we need shall be uh, given unto us. Let us look at uh, familiar verses then, that uh, we always look at when we are talking about prayer and faith. The book of uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 7, Ask and it shall be given you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For any gift he has promised, we may ask. And this is asking without doubt, asking knowing that uh, the Lord is not deaf unto our prayers, but uh, he is willing even to give us more, not only the earthly things, but the heavenly thing, even his spirit. It is part of God's plan to grant us in answer to the prayer of faith that which he will not bestow, did we not thus ask. And so everything we need, we ask of the Lord. And it is God's plan. Imagine it's not even our plan. It's God's plan to grant us in answer to the prayer of faith. All we need is to exercise belief in what we are asking. Asking properly. What does it mean to ask properly then? Our asking must be according to God's will. The book of education, page 258. Not as I will, but as thou wilt. Matthew chapter 29, verse 39. So we don't ask things as we will. But as God's will is, that means that um, in obedience to the word of God, not in, uh, uh, in opposition to the word of God, uh, we must ask the things that he has promised. We are looking at the prayer of faith, and this is number two in the series, Our Higher Calling. We are looking at prayer of faith. And how do we ask properly? We must ask for the things that he has promised, for the pardon of sin, for the Holy Spirit, for a Christless timber, for wisdom and strength to do his work, for any gift he has promised, we may ask. So, of the things that he has told us to ask, if we ask him, he is faithful to give unto us. It is the will of God to cleanse us from sin, to make us his children, and to enable us to live a holy life, so we may ask for these blessings. And uh, when we are talking about forgiveness of sin and uh, cleansing us, it's not just something spiritual. Uh, you find that uh, th there were people who were sick and came to Jesus Christ. There are people who are sick and came to Jesus Christ and uh, uh, Christ told them that uh, your sins are forgiven. So when you are talking about uh, forgiveness, and prayer of faith and uh, God cleanses, cleansing us our sins, it has to do with a physical restoration to a physical health. It doesn't just do with the, the spiritual, but uh, it has something to do with the uh, uh, physical health too. And uh, we can be sure that to every promise of God there are conditions. If we are willing to do His will, uh, all His strength is ours. Whatever gift He promises, is in the promise itself. Uh, like the seed is the word of God. When you read Luke chapter 8 verses 11, the seed is the word of God. As surely as the oak is, the, is in the acorn, so surely is the gift of God in his promise. If we receive the promise, um, we, we have the gift. And so, everything that the Lord has commanded, everything that the Lord has given unto us, as promises are already gifts for us and we have just to exercise belief in uh, what we are asking because they are already given to us. Uh, and uh, in these promises, it furnishes us with a subject matter for prayer. And uh, we can challenge God at his own word by uh, what is the best way to pray? What is the best prayer to way to pray. It is naming those things 
that are in his word which he has promised himself that uh, he will be able to give us, then we are to believe that um, we will receive them. S sometimes people don't exercise this gift of belief and the gift of patience in the things that the Lord has promised. But uh, listen to what we are told here. That uh, we need to look for no outward evidence of the blessing. The gift is in the promise and we may go about our work assured that what God has promised he is able to perform and that the gift which uh, we already possess will be realized when we need uh, it uh, most. And so it is lack of faith and belief on our side that has made it impossible to have the promises that the Lord has said or has written in his word that they are ours. God is waiting to manifest himself unto us, but it is a lack of exercising our belief in him. And impatience, most of the time, you find that we are impatient with what we are asking of the Lord. And so it becomes so difficult for God to work for us if we are exercising impatience and unbelief. And uh, look at um, the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus said the Lord of the Lord, the maker there of the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I'll answer thee, and shew thee great and mighty things which thou knoweth not. So, uh, many times we don't call on the Lord. What we do is complain. When we have a problem, instead of calling upon the Lord, we, we find that uh, we are complaining. We are not calling upon the name of the Lord. He says that, call upon my, uh, my name. Call upon me, and I'll show you things that you have never seen. But... Um, there is a lot of murmuring, there is a lot of strife, there is a lot of disunity, there is a lot of wars and fighting. And uh, these are not things that are contained in faith. You must be at peace with God to exercise faith. You must be at peace with fellow brethren to exercise faith. And uh, the book of James chapter 4 puts it out so well. We are looking at the power uh, we are looking at um, prayer of faith, James chapter 4. James chapter 4 says this From when come wars and fighting among you, come, they not hand even of your last that war in your members. Yea, lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you have not, because you ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is enemy uh, of God. And so, there, there is uh, what we call... Uh, in uh, prayer of faith and asking of the Lord, there, there is what we call righteousness by faith or justification by faith. In, in which way, if the Lord has said that, uh, uh, come unto me, or call unto me, and then uh, I'll show you things that you have never seen. If he has said that um, you pray in his will and you exercise this so as you be able to get the gift, you find that, People will want to do something to appease God, justification by works, so that the Lord may accept them and accept their prayers. We cannot please God. And so uh, the, the, the matter of praying, uh, practicing something so that you may be accepted of the Lord and then he may bless you, it is uh, justification by works and not justification by faith. And so in prayer of faith, what is needed is belief and not modify or not try to work out your own salvation. And I have just said that word, not trying to work out your own salvation, but letting Christ work in you to do 
and to will of his own pleasure. And so when we come to the Lord, we must exercise faith, believe, not try to please him so that he may answer prayers, but just come as little children, come to their fathers. You, you don't find a, a, a child, maybe a child who is in school, a child uh, who is in need of, of something, coming to the father and trying to please him so that he may get the things he wants. No, the child knows that this is the father and he will come and tell the father, I need this and I need that. And he, he has this belief that the father will give him because he is the father. Uh, and uh, look at the scenario of the book of uh, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Now this is an interesting story, the story of the centurion. Asking the prayer of faith. Matthew chapter 8. And uh, and when Jesus, Matthew chapter 8 verses 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I'll come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel, and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You, you see this centurion, he doesn't even wait for Jesus Christ to go to his house. He believes that if only Christ spoke the word, it will come to pass. If only Christ spoke the word, it will come to pass. And so, many times even the heathens practice more faith than even the Christian do. And uh, it's a rebuke unto us who says that we believe in the Lord, yet will not exercise such a, a, a faith. Yet we, shall, we cannot exercise such a faith, believing that God, believing that things can be done before we even uh, see them happen. Because when you look at uh, what we describe as faith in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, is that uh, it is uh, a substance of things hoped for, an evidence of things not seen. So you believe without seeing the thing. If you ask, you believe without seeing the thing. And... Uh, Uh, most of the time, you find that we wander away from the truth and we wander away and uh, we do not receive these things because we want to see them. And uh, how do you exercise faith uh, in the things you have not seen? How do you exercise a prayer of faith in the things that are not already seen and yet you believe that uh, you have ha gotten them? It is giving thanks to the Lord before you see the things. It is giving thanks to the Lord. And so, to exercise faith in believing before you get them is you give thanks before you get the things themselves. This is Sometimes we lack this. And uh, the other time we were talking about Jesus Christ giving thanks before he even got the things he wanted or he multiplied the bread to 5,000 and the 4,000. We have to exercise thanksgiving to God before even we get the things that uh, we, wa we want. 
Desire of ages page uh, 200. Desire of ages page 200. Not because we see or feel that God hears us are we to believe. We are to trust in his promises when we come to him in faith. Every petition enters the heart of God. When we have asked for his blessing, we should believe that we receive it. And uh, as I, I, I have said that uh, we go ahead and thank him for giving us such a thing. It will surely come to pass. Although it tarries, the Lord says that uh, it will surely come to pass. What he has promised will come to pass. And this is the condition. Uh, this is uh, the most vital uh, uh, part of our prayer of faith, thanksgiving, before you even get it. When you, you look at our steps to Christ, page 51, it says we are to thank God that we have received them. And education 258, we are to return thanks to God that we have received. Even though the things have not been given unto us. Uh, look at uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. It says, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we, we must exercise faith. And the, the best way to exercise faith, the, the, the faith in prayer is to give thanks of the things that you need and believing that you will get them, you give thanks to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this and this. And then uh, you will be able to get this thing. We, we, we go to another segment in the uh, prayer of faith. And uh, this is what I want us to look at as uh, the second segment. In the second segment, what are we praying for? This is one question that we should ask ourselves. Special conditions. Uh, he says in John 16, 23 and 24, And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it unto you. He will give it to you. He thought to have you ask nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. So, what are we praying for and in what name? We are asking in the name of Jesus Christ. But to pray in Christ's name means much. It means that we are to accept his character, manifest his spirit, and work his works. The Savior's promise is given on condition. If you love me, he says, keep my commandments. He saves men, not in sin, but from sin. And those who love him will show their love by obedience. You cannot say that you are asking in the name of Jesus, when actually you are going against his commandment, if you are uh, persisting in rebellion. First uh, John 2.6. Look at First John 2.6. The book of First John chapter 2 verses 6. It is so important unto us. First John 2.6. It says, He that said that he bided in he abided in him, ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. So we, we cannot be asking the Lord in rebellion. That will never happen. In the name means in his character. We have to pray while being in obedience. What is in the name? In Christ's name, our petition are sent to the Father. He intercedes uh, in our behalf and the Father lays open all the treasures of his grace. For us to enjoy and impart to others. Ask in my name, Christ says, make use of my name. This will give your prayers efficiency and the Father will give you the riches of his grace. Wherefore, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. So to ask in his name is to petition so that also we may impart unto others for Christ lived to bless others. When with earnestness and intensity we breathe a prayer in the name of Christ, there is in that very intensity a pledge from God that is about to answer our prayer, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And so we, when we pray in his name, we believe that he is our mediator, the mediator of the covenant, and he will be able to fulfill because he is our, our go-between. He will be able to uh, tell his father, you know, our, the channels of the prayer, even uh, they pass through unclean lips, and unless they are purified by the blood, the atoning blood of Jesus Christ, then it avails to nothing. So praying in his name, we believe that he is the uh, person between us and God. 
fulfill conditions embedded in the text. First uh, John 1 9, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And uh, after we have prayed in his name, we must know that we are actually walking in his grace so that uh, of the things we ask, we may be able to receive him. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. So if we implicitly and wholly trust in the Lord, he will give us a perfect peace. If you want to know that uh, uh, the things you are right with God is the peace you experience in prayer also. The peace you experience in prayer helps you have the confidence that uh, God is able to answer your prayers. But uh, when, we are, we, when we don't feel that peace in our lives, when we don't experience peace in prayers, we know that actually our prayers uh, cannot be heard. James 1, 2, 1, 2 to 3, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And so uh, cultivating patience is part of uh, the prayer of faith. Many people will not want to uh, cultivate patience in their prayers, and we have looked at that. Procedures for presenting promises. God stands back of every promise he has made. With your Bible in your hand, say, I have done as thou hast said. I present thy promise. This is so beautiful. And that is what I was saying that um, uh, challenge God at his word. Look at uh, the book of uh, uh, Malachi chapter, chapter 3. Look at the book of uh, Malachi chapter 3. Challenge God at his word. This is the prayer of faith we are looking at. Pray according to his word. Look at the promises and claim them as your own. Look at the book of Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. It says, uh, starting from verse 7. Even from this day of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I'll return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But you said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offering? You are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse, that they may be meet in mine house, and prove me now here it said the Lord of hosts, I will not, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be, not be a room enough to receive it. And so he says, prove me. Try me. Try me at my own word. After you have done what you are supposed to do, try God as his own word. Challenge him. You have said that if I do this, you will do this. Now here I am. I'm claiming your promise. Thank you for uh, giving it unto me. And see if God will not actually uh, 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 prove his word unto you. If he will not prove his word unto you. So, with your Bible in your hand, say, I have done as thou have said. I present, uh, uh, I present thy promise. It's not our promises. It is his own promises. And this is what I was saying that actually it connects with the righteousness by faith, that God is the one who promises we are the ones that receive. So what we have just to do, go in his strength and ask him to give unto us and he shall be able to give unto us what he has promised. We, we can't promise God anything. He is the one who have all the blessings. And so we have just to avail ourselves for the blessings. Factors to consider at claiming this uh, uh, we don't have an ability to change ourselves, brethren. We don't have that ability. And so we depend on God. He is the one who is doing the work of reformation in our life. And so when we appear before him, we must expect that, first of all, he will enable us to obey him, and next thing, he will help us get the promises. And uh, it, it is his spirit even which knows our yearnings and uh, uh, one. In John chapter 15, verses 5, as we just come to a close, I am the vine, you are the branches. Now, this is an interesting story. Uh, I, I just like to talk about it in a, a few minutes. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Think about this. The, the vine receives the nutrients from the roots. And then after receiving the nutrients, through the sap, it feeds the branches. And so there's nothing that the branches have done so that they may receive this sap. The only thing that the branches have to do is to remain in the vine. And how does the branch remain in the vine? Actually, it is continually by feeding on the sap that the vine is providing. So if the branch will decide that um, I'm not in need of the sap, it will wither away. Yet, if it decides to remain on the tree and in the vine, it will continually receive the sap. And so I am the vine and the branches, and, that abide, and he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me he can do nothing. So the part of a Christian is to remain in the vine. And how are you maintained in the vine? By the, the, the Holy Spirit. And as the Holy Spirit renews and revitalizes your life, it doesn't just come with the power of doing away with the sin. It comes with the gifts that helps you even overcome that sin, providing both the physical and the spiritual needs. And so as the vine receives the sap freely from the vine by remaining in the vine, so Christians receive the promises through remaining in Christ, and they are maintained by Christ. Without Christ, no one can remain in Christ. So it is Christ who makes us remain in him. And as we remain in him, the sap, the Holy Spirit, is given unto us and more gifts are added. You look, when the sap is supplied to the vine, the, uh, when the vine supplies the sap to the branches, the branches brings forth much fruit. And so while we remain in Christ, we receive of the blessings and we multiply the same blessings in our life. This is, this is the scenario of the power of uh, uh, the, the prayer of faith and remaining in Jesus Christ, justification by faith and righteousness by faith, remaining in him and him being able to give us everything we ask of him. So the prayer of faith. You are not able of yourself to bring your purposes and desires and inclination into the submission to the will of God, but you are willing to be made willing. God will accomplish the work for you. So it is he who works in us both to do and to will of his own pleasure. Of us alone, we cannot even ask a right. And so... Every word of, of God, every command of God is a promise unto us. Every command of God is a promise for us. And uh, when we read the word of God, every time we read it, every command we read it, we should take it as a promise. You know, we always uh, think of thou shall not do this. But in this thou shall not do this, these are the promises of the Lord. They are the promises that condense the blessing. Look at the book of Genesis chapter 3. He says that, uh, chapter 2, chapter 3, In the day thou shalt eat of it, thou shalt surely die. In that commandment, thou shalt not eat of it, you find that it is a blessing of eternal life. So in every command of God, it is a promise. We look at the commandments and thou shalt not do this as negative things in our lives. But we should be looking at them as positive things. Thou shalt not commit adultery. This is a blessing unto your life. You will not get HIV. You will not uh, be at odd with your wife. You will not uh, uh, get unwanted pregnancies. You will not be at loss with the community. These are all blessings that come with thou shalt not do this. But we look at the commandments as negative negativities. And thou shalt not covet. The promise is thou shalt remain contented. The Lord will give you the contentment. 
And so it's a time we took the commandments of God not as a negative thing, but as a positive thing. Thou shalt not bow down to other gods. This means that thou shalt continually worship thy God, thy Lord. And in doing this, all the blessings of the heaven are bestowed upon you. So every commandment of God is a promise and we may claim it. We may challenge God at his word that thou hast promised this, thou hast commanded to do this, and then uh, thou have not played your part in doing this. I have done my part. You have enabled me to do my part, but there is a part that God you have not done in my life. And I challenge you on that, that do it, fulfill it in my life. And so uh, the bottom line is that um, the prayer of faith is believing and not doubting. And the most important thing is to thank God. Faith is exercising, having the substance without seeing the thing. Faith is a substance of the things hoped for. Substance is something which is tangible. And this substance is what shows evidence of the things not seen. And so, believe and thank God. And know that he is the one who works in you to will and to do of his own pleasure. And then, this is the prayer of faith. And God will be able to accomplish everything that he has promised in your life. Otherwise, God bless you. And uh, may he instill in us a heart of belief and not a heart of unbelief. Uh, the disciples, and uh, this is the last thing I'm reading. The disciples said something which is important in our lives. Uh, I pray that I get it. Look at uh, the book of Luke chapter 17. This is where I'm going to end. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, quickly. Luke chapter 17. I read. Uh, then, said unto, uh, then said he unto the disciples, Luke chapter 17, 1 to 5. It is impossible but that offenders will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a milestone were hung about than his neck and he, he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of the little ones. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day and seven times in a day and seven times in a day, turn against to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive. Him. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. So what does it mean to increase our faith? Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And so what they are essentially saying, Lord, increase our belief in thy word. Increase our belief in thy word. So the prayer of faith is exercising the promises that are in the word of the Lord. Otherwise, God bless you. and. Uh, May he increase our faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, because you are willing to do exceedingly abundantly than what we may ask. And so our prayer is that you may increase our faith, that we may exercise a prayer of faith, believing in thy word and taking your commandments as a promise unto us. We should not look at them as a negative thing, but a positive thing. Thank you, Lord, for this session that we have had together with brethren and uh, continue guiding us into all truth and help us to have the faith of a mustard seed to be able just to speak and things happen. Let thy will be done for these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.